Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer practice lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, more colorful than usual, we will configure VLANs and VTP, the VLAN trunking protocol. VTP is used to propagate VLAN configurations among switches. So you can configure the required VLANs on a single switch and have it share the configurations with other switches instead of having to configure the same VLANs on every individual switch. So the first step is to configure the switch ports connecting switches as trunk ports and disable DTP. That's simple enough. Let's go on switch one. Enable conf t interface G01, switch port mode trunk, switch port no negotiate, exit. Now on switch two. Enable conf t interface range G01 to two, switch port mode trunk, switch port no negotiate, exit. Finally on switch three. Enable, conf t, interface G01, switch port mode trunk, switch port no negotiate, exit. Okay, that's all for step one. Step two is to configure switch two as VTP transparent. First, let's review the different VTP modes. There are three VTP modes, server, client, and transparent. In this lab, switch one will be a server and switch three will be a client. Switch two will be in transparent mode. VTP servers are able to create and delete VLANs and then share those configurations with other switches. VTP clients cannot create or delete VLANs, but will rather sync their VLAN configuration with the VTP server. VTP transparent switches will not sync their VLAN configurations to a server. They will, however, pass along VTP messages from VTP servers. So in this lab, switch two will be in transparent mode and it's between switch one and switch three. It won't sync its VLANs to switch one, but it will pass switch one's messages to switch three. Okay, let's do the configuration. First, VTP mode transparent. Configure switch two in VTP transparent mode. Next, the VTP domain name, as you can see here, is CCNA. VTP domain CCNA. Also, we are told to configure VTP version 2. VTP version 2. Cisco recommends to avoid using version 1 if possible. Next, let's create VLAN 40 on switch 2. VLAN 40, name, accounting. Exit. Let's check. Do show VLAN brief. There we go. VLAN 40, name, accounting. The next step is to configure our VTP server, switch one. VTP domain, CCNA, VTP version two, VTP mode server. VTP server is actually the default VTP mode, by the way. Okay, now let's create VLANs 10, 20, and 30. VLAN 10, name HR. VLAN 20, name Sales. VLAN 30, name Engineering. Exit. Next, let's configure switch three as a VTP client and it should get all of this configuration from switch one. VTP mode client. Do show VTP status. Notice how the VTP version two and VTP domain name of CCNA are already set without us having to configure them. If a VTP switch with the default domain name null receives a message from a VTP switch in another domain, it will automatically join that other switch's domain. 
Same thing for the VTP version. If a version 1 switch receives a VTP message from a VTP version 2 switch, it will change to VTP version 2 if it's supported on the switch. The next step is to assign all switch ports connected to hosts to their proper VLANs and disable VTP. This is pretty repetitive work, but let's get into it. Right here on switch 3 first. Interface F01, switch port, mode, access, switch port, access, VLAN 10, switch port, no negotiate. Interface range F02 to 3. Switch port, mode, access. Switch port, access, VLAN 30. Switch port, no negotiate. Interface F04. Switch port, mode, access. Switch port, access, VLAN 20. Switch port, no negotiate. Okay, next is switch 2. Interface range F01 to 2. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 40. Switch port no negotiate. Finally, switch 1. Interface range F01 to 2. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 10. Switch port no negotiate. Last one, interface F03. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20. Switch port no negotiate. Okay, all done. Finally, we are to configure the trunk ports to allow only VLANs 1, 10, and 20. Let's do it here on switch one first. Interface G01, switch port trunk allowed VLAN. Now let's check our options. This word option allows us to specify a list of allowed VLANs. For example, one, two, three, four. Do show interfaces trunk. See, VLANs one to four are allowed. If I enter the same thing again with different numbers, that list will be replaced. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 5, 6, 7, 8. Do show interfaces trunk. See, 1 to 4 has been replaced by 5 to 8. The next option, add, adds to the current list. Let's try. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN add 9. Do show interfaces trunk. Now it's 5 to 9. Remove does the opposite, removing from the current list. For example, switch port trunk allowed VLAN, remove 9. Do show interfaces trunk. Now it's 5 to 8 again. All allows all VLANs, of course. Let's try. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN all. Do show interfaces trunk. Now it's 1 to 1005. We can also do the opposite with none. Switch port trunk allowed VLANs none. Do show interfaces trunk. Now nothing appears. Finally, there is the accept option. We can allow all VLANs except certain ones. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN except two. Do show interfaces trunk. Now it's one and three to 1005. Okay, now let's get back to the task at hand. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1, 10, 20. Do show interfaces trunk. There we go. Let's do the same thing on the other switches and then we're done. So next is switch two. Interface range G01 to two. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1, 10, 20. Finally, switch 3. Interface G01, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1, 10, 20. In this lab, we configured VTP, and we also looked at how to add and remove allowed VLANs on trunks.
That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT, or Basic Attention Token, donations in the Brave browser.